Again, I'm Michael Rourke, and I've been affiliated constantly with Black Diamond for 40 plus years. I've done Garden Guy. I've done a lot of stuff that I don't want to admit to, but just recently, within the last, Scott, where to go? Last two years, actually, we started playing around with podcasts. Scott, he is involved with ESPN. He was working for Buckeye Cable System. He is the technocrat when it comes down to knowing anything and everything about pushing buttons and not screwing up. So here's the deal. What ends up happening is I'm, I got just a brief glimpse of what get, uh, Zach's synopsis was. How are you going to increase your customer base and sales? And how can you do it easily with the new technology or easier? When it comes to technology, I'm not going to answer any of those questions. This guy will. And I would prefer if he could. What I'd like to do, know, know though, is how many different facilities are is represented here today three four four four, four plus oh nine. we got how many of you okay so say about five or six all together being that this is basically a collective you all want to benefit from something so that it does increase something that you want to do and perform with scott has introduced we've been doing pod not podcast but we did things from media from television, which was extremely expensive 20 plus years ago, to working with Zach on to doing social media about five, 10 years ago, and got just about the same amount of uh, activity that we were getting from spending big bucks for advertising on television, radio, et cetera, and them telling us what to do. Now the combination of all of them is causing a little bit of a, uh, I want to say static, since the podcasting came in, Scott came in about two years ago and asked if I would be interested in doing it. And I had no idea what in the world it was until he showed me. Now, as far as what you can do, the biggest scare in the world right now with podcasting is the technology. When it comes to technology, the easiest portion of it right now is to find somebody that knows what in the heck they're doing and talking about. And that's why I'm going to have Scott talk right now about it. You want to introduce yourself, Mr. Sandstrom? I think you did. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, first of all, uh, my wife is a family member, owner of uh, Black Diamond, along with Zach. So it's all in the family. My brother-in-law is all scattered all within the grouping. Uh, so I am a, now I am a freelance audio engineer. I do sports television. Um, so I, yeah, I've always been in advertising, used to be a video editor and all that. So yeah, kind of built in ease of me getting into the electronics portion. So during COVID, when the sports world was shut down in the beginning and I was sitting at home, I keep my hands and my mind occupied with audio. I said, I've always messed around with that. Let's start a podcast. Because so like Mike said, TV, even at the diamond, even uh, messing around with like doing Facebook Live, you know, as Facebook was uh, big in the beginning, it started out big, right? But it, it comes down. So uh, anyway, so we've done that Facebook Live, the radio, and the TV, and Mike's done the TV scenarios and Saturday morning stuff. So Mike is a good person as far as knowing television or radio. So he had that natural flow of, you know in the middle of a conversation he'll be saying and we're here talking to zach edwards from black diamond so he has that natural ability so mike was an easy flow into what i wanted to do so i said well let's just start a podcast we'll mess around with it like we've done other things for black diamond um really wasn't about Black Diamond. It was, we went with the title of uh, your Midwest Garden podcast, Midwest being the term. Everything I've learned doing advertising, even for like car dealers and stuff is like, you have to have your niche. We're the truck kings of Toledo. So everybody knows if you want a truck, you go to Joe on Route 104 because he's, he's the king of trucks. Um, I've done that for a hundred years, it seems like. So uh, yes, it narrows down your niche, but we also know that it gives us an identifier compared to others out there. So we started messing around with podcasts and putting out some shows. 
things we learned, uh, even from the Facebook Live, was it was is the audience we were trying to reach. Our demographic obviously was a little bit older. They're not into electronics, so we figure, how can we make this easier? So podcasting was the way we decided to do it. It's basically radio. You're not buying airtime. You're buying a hosting. It's um, it's a mix between a website because you're hosting on a platform that charges you, you know, 12, 15 bucks a month, even a little bit higher, depending on how many hours you post. Uh, so that was an easy, you buy the low end package and you figure out and go from there. All the recording gear, all that stuff, microphones and stuff, I already had. So it was a breeze for us. And what else did we do? We did, we did, um, we did a few trials. We had some interviews. We did, we did some rating locally. I mean, yes. we didn't know how to basically get things going and bring up the interest. It took us, you know, a couple of trips and a couple of falls and stumbles and scab our knees to get things going. And it got going, but we brought in people. I don't know if any of you have heard anything about, for instance, Thomas Jackson, inner city and how the city of Toledo was basically pushing him down and not allowing him to do any growing. Well, now he's own, he owns his own greenhouse and it's thanks to, uh, but the city's still giving him a hard time. So we're gonna to continue to inform people on the updating on that. So that's a social hour. Now we're getting into the podcast that basically is going to get into, someone said in the Democrat party eons ago, never let a crisis go untethered. Okay, I didn't understand that. Well, we've had COVID for two and a half years. How can we benefit from it? We've got a podcast. What can we do? People can grow things. Who are we trying to reach right now? Now, I'm in my 60s. My grandfather was always, far, was not farming, but he was doing, well, farming, gardening, killing, you know, hornworm, tomato hornworm. How did you kill him? He had me walking through there and he goes, here, and he goes and pinches it right in front of me. And I'm like, you know, this green gook all over the place. And I'm going, that's cool. So I'm out there grabbing all the tomato hornworms that we could find. I didn't know any better, but I learned from that. People in the central city, and not just the central city, the people in the city do not know how to grow. They don't know where their food sources are coming from. They would like to grow. They would like to do their own. But the demographic is anywhere between the ages of 25 to 65, or maybe even death on growing. Ignorance is bliss. A child came into Black Diamond one time and didn't know that they could grow tomatoes in their own backyard. They thought it came from Kroger's, so to the milk. Um, so what we're doing right now is we experiment. We've done things with, um, uh, for instance, we got one coming up that's a high school, for instance, that we're gonna be talking to where they're going to be educating. There's Toledo Public Schools with Brian Ellis, and then there's a gentleman by the name of Brian Smith. They're educating students to find an interest in growing things, not necessarily just the tomatoes and cucumbers, but the hydrangeas or the pollinators or the, the, the native plants themselves. Getting the horticultural thing back into play here where everybody knows what they did prior to World War II. So the demographic from 25 all the way up to 60 is being reached from him discovering how we can do this. Facebook, well, I heard Zach say something about Pinterest. We're not gonna be doing Pinterest, but we also do Instagram. We do a number of things. And to my amazement, um, we discovered that we got people from Paris, France, Canada, Washington State listening in also. One of the benefits of podcasting too is you can pause it. You have to go to the bathroom and you're driving 200 miles somewhere, pause it and go and come back and turn it back on. Or if you remember, you can create your own library. I don't know how many we have, but you can always refer to something. We've had, for instance, last year, do you remember the uh, Asian army one that came flying in? And they said it came in from, you know, some type of <clears throat> aeronautical something and the, the moth laid her eggs and it was just gonna be a one-time thing. We'll see. Scott got that thing running and up there, do, 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 do. everybody alert, alert, alert. The army worms here, it's only gonna be temporary. The best thing to do is this. Um, same thing happened when we had an early frost. Yep. And frost was our number one within 24 hours uh, statistics, our number one most downloaded podcast of uh, the two seasons. And we do, we're doing 38 shows uh, a season, um, which is <clears throat> this, this year we took January and February off 
last year we did all the way through. And so well, how can it benefit these folks? Well, yeah, and this is this is kind of if you don't have a Scott with your all your own recording equipment already, and and you don't have a host site and all this stuff, the best thing to do, and I was I was gonna try to work it so I scared you a little bit, but the thing is is that it's it's about sharing. The number one deal is podcasts like us, uh, other shows also, let's, are looking for guests, and you guys are looking for a podcast or or another means of getting your message across. So it's it's a sharing. You call us, or you find another podcast or a, a radio show it doesn't have to be a podcast, and offer to be a guest on it and share what you know. And that just opens up a lot of doors. It opens up doors to people looking at your site, what you know, you'll get other people contacting you to find out, hey, can you do this for me too? Can you even repeat the same type of show um, information for us? Repetition, so, yeah. repetition, repetition. On, your, on the stats that Zach presented to you, the shares, 137 shares or whatever it was. That is the most important to me of those because it means that other people that are on your Facebook page care enough to push it again. You know, hitting like or hitting a laugh button on a comment is it's, it's a reaction. You do it once and it's out of somebody's mind, but to say, hey, I'm gonna share this with my friends or to my page, that is, they remember, so they're more interested in coming back to your page. And two, they're spreading the word out for you. It's uh, like a colony and ants type of thing. That is huge. So I do, the biggest kick is when I do all the graphics for Instagram and our Facebook page. We do not have a website. Um, but just seeing how much that goes further, that's more rewarding than you know, even people commenting because I mean, they're just spreading the word out big time. Yeah, word of mouth. And, and that's how it's basically been going. I mean, listen to these guys or listen to this. Um, when it comes to the Mommy Valley, again, repetition, repetition, repetition is probably going to be the most beneficial aspect that you can get from whatever you're going to use as far as a medium for advertising. Um, now, I don't think any of us have, you know, very deep pockets and the name's not Rockefeller, Gates or Trump. So we can't go out there and, you know, spend the big bucks using what we can and what we have access to, to the fullest is probably going to give you uh, the benefit of increasing your reach, first of all, and then hopefully knocking out a lot more for revenue incoming. Now, the crisis that I was talking about, COVID is basically are almost over, but there's always seemingly something's going on like this, this, this Ukraine thing, um, regardless of what it is. I mean, not only educating, but how many of you have been on Facebook and you've seen something on, you know, does anybody know what kind of a flower this is? Or does anybody know what kind of an insect this is? Or does anybody know what's wrong with my tomatoes? Things of this nature. We've been answering those, not necessarily, well, I've been kind of screwing up. Scott's been, <laughs> I've been trying to get these things, the answers to them and answer like on an individual basis. A lot of times it doesn't transfer over and he'll go through the technical terminology and say, you're supposed to do this, then this, then that. Oh, and I pretend so I know what, what he's, he's trying about. to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What he's trying to say is Mike is answering other gardeners questions under I tend to rattle your Midwest yeah. Garden title. Mm -hmm. You're we're not allowed or it's frowned upon to jump on somebody else's page, you know, as they think of us as like a company or a profiting thing, which we are not. This is mm -hmm. all out of our pockets type of deal. Um, so instead of trying to be friends or get on their group, we just answer under that. And we don't say anything about the podcast. We figure that if somebody appreciated that answer, they're going to say, well, who is who answered it? And they're going to look and they'll say, your Midwest Garden podcast. 
And then hopefully they'll be smart enough two and two together, find us and click on their own. Um, a question. So what this basically is, and I'm a novice, and I don't think anyone here does podcasts. Correct. So the first questions that come to mind is, uh, this is another vehicle to market or promote, or I don't want to say advertise, that's a little bit different. But to educate your audience, whoever the audience may be, if you tell everyone that you're on the air at a certain time. No, that's not at a certain time. Okay. Uh, let's go back about... 20 years when everybody had cable and everybody remembers video on demand. You can watch a movie when you wanted to. That's what podcast is. So all they need is a link to your site. The link to the site. site. It's probably not going to be their site. And then they can see the list of they offerings. They see the list of your <laughs> show. And you can go down and you can hit play and it'll just start one after the other. You can look at the titles. Um, you know, let's say... You know, I know I'm going to start my seeds pretty soon, you know, so we have a show about starting with seeds, starting with plugs, da, 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 da. They click and they listen. And then it's just like VOD or um, streaming Netflix right now. You can hit pause. You can come back later. You, if you're doing it through your phone and you're listening through your earbuds and you get in your car, it picks right up you know, and you finish the episode in your car, wherever. Now, we know the growers are very busy uh, just doing what they do. And all this marketing stuff that's been creeping in for the last 10 or 15 years is consuming more of their time. Mm -hmm. But I got to believe this is just another vehicle to hit the audience that may or may not, you may not be hitting. What do you recommend as far as the length of a podcast? to keep interest? So they say duration of a business trip and you're going to and from work, 20 to 30 minutes, okay? All right. It can last an hour. We, we sometimes go up to an hour. And, okay. and I'm, I'm like, well, hit pause. There's no reason, you don't need to finish in a 30 minute drive to work you can hit pause and come right back to some of the podcasts i listen to personally some of them go up to an hour hour and a half sometimes and it i don't even think about it i just i just continue when i continue so so in our situation where we are all novices mm -hmm. um would a good place to start be to call you guys and say, hey, you know, I, I'd like to share some information about the industry or Northwest Ohio or whatever. Uh, is there an opportunity for me to come on your show? Exactly what I was pointing well, to, to in the very beginning. Too. Yes. <laughs> Just I mean, you, the part about scaring you if you need all this equipment is, is you can find an outlet. It doesn't have to be ours, but you can find an outlet to get your message across and find somebody that will, you know, take, like I said, you know, podcasters are looking for guests. Guests are looking for a place to tell their story or their advice. Um, right now we're doing what, two a month? Uh, maybe yeah, three. We're, we're two. We were doing two set once a month with one week open in case there's, you know, the fall army worm or something or the, uh, Anything. Anything that's a surprise. That's I mean, just basically for us to map out our lives around our regular. So maybe to make it simple, uh, they could contact you or they could contact me mm -hmm. and the Maumee Valley Growers could maybe sponsor that podcast or we could talk about a problem or whatever they want to talk about. Well, when I asked the question, how many people were here from that were individuals for each representing their own company for Maumee Valley Growers? Mommy Valley Growers can basically, one of the benefits there is, is that you do have membership and you could have them then turn and say, Jane Doe has this problem with, you know, green bugs right now on their peppers. What in the heck is going on? Are they the only ones that have it? Well, let's bring Jane on and we'll find out what's causing this or historically what the problem was and what they used in the past and things of this nature. Talk to the language rather than try to make it monotone and have somebody just sit there, you know, like, yes, and it was, we're using ourselves pyrethrins right now to go ahead and control as many as we can. No, make them comfortable, grab a cup of coffee, tea or beer, or whatever, sit down and just have a casual conversation and say, well, how did Mommy Valley Growers benefit from this? Or how did Creakies benefit from it? What did they do? Um, what did Black Diamond do? 
And that's how it, it gets to other people to say, yeah, you know what? I heard this. And it, well, if you get onto the podcast or go ahead and call Creekies, call my, is there a phone number for Maumee Valley Growers that they can go ahead and send them to the people within the community of the Maumee Valley Grower membership that would benefit more so? So technically, all a grower would have to do is be in contact with you. It, the interview can be conducted on their phone, on the phone. Is that right? Or talk about that. Yes. yes. Or be, so we've, we got about five more minutes. So I'm just trying yeah. to get it, dig down to generate some interest. So right. we can walk away with three, four, or five yes. participants. Yeah. So we can, we, we can the way we do it is we do uh, in person or phone interview, whichever way anybody's uh, comfortable. Uh, phone interview, I drop off a secondary microphone or I've shipped it everywhere. We've talked to people. Connecticut, we had a lady that yeah. make Mai Tais. And, <laughs> <laughs> on a, yeah, her flowers. So she probably, yeah, yeah. Well, what do they call that in Bel... Uh, oh, well, it's it's delicious. delicious is what they call it. <laughs> but we, you know, so I send an extra mic around just because I'm Mr. Perfect when it comes to audio. So I want a clean sound versus a phone. But yeah, that's, I mean, that's how you can do it. And the nice, the nice thing I think about all of this is, is that, you know, we're not necessarily black diamond in our show. I mean, we do here and there and stuff, but I think what it does is I think it helps just people get the information that they want so that there, there's a bigger interest in gardening and then, therefore, you know, it's not necessarily I'm going to Black Diamond, but I'm going to my garden center. We always talk about garden centers helping out the family type stores and stuff like that. The independent so, garden centers are not dying. They're still there. And then, well, we had a conversation about pricing. I mean, historically, they've not been the cheapest in the world. But the people that run those are the people that own them. And they know exactly what they're putting into it. And how not just the love, not just the nutrients, not just it's everything their livelihood is in there. And so you're getting basically what you pay for. And that's what we're promoting is that the garden centers, the independent garden centers are far more interested in your success or the people that are coming in than let's say the discount stores are. Now try to find somebody to tell you how you're going to control. Do you know anything about beneficials? Well, yeah, I benefit from a lot of stuff. No, <laughs> I mean, seriously, when it comes down to it, it's it's giving them, if you want a Mercedes, you go to a Mercedes dealer. You don't buy it used from a car lot that sells trucks. I mean, if you do, you're going to get what you pay for. So after the recording is done and it's in your library, mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the growers can access this through a YouTube link? No, no, it's not, it's you can access a podcast directly from the. So when I host it, uh, uh, Buzzsprout.com is where I host mine. But there's okay. like five carriers. But there's all over the place. But on your phone or your computer, you can download apps, iHeart, um, TuneIn, um, Spotify, right. Spotify, Spotify, yeah. Spotify, yeah. yeah. There's a ton of uh, podcast playing apps, and they all get our program. Um, so the point is, we can step into this one thing at a time, <laughs> starting with the interview in the beginning, the mm -hmm. recording, and then distributing it to our growers. Hey, uh, yeah. Tom Ordell did an interview, uh, blah, 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 and here's how you can listen to it. Yeah, exactly. That like, creates the buzz to do more of that. And this, and this is what we talk about when we get other uh, people in from uh, guests like from Wisconsin and, and Minnesota, where are like, you know, this is gonna be, you know, now you can promote, it's, it's free to you. All you're doing is spending an hour with us on, on the phone and it's free for you. It's like, now you can say in your store, you know, as heard on X and X podcast, whichever one you appear on, um, you know, and then you push that on your Facebook page and your social media, and then boom, that, so that grows both of our audience because we're saying that, you're saying that, and boom, we grow together. Give you an example too, the soil test kits. It's called soil test. Soil, soil test, soilkit.com. Soil, soil, yeah, and yep. it's super easy. How many people have you had that wanted their soils tested, that wanted to know exactly, is it toxic? What's going on? Am I doing 
And you'd go to the extension, which they're, they don't do it anymore, but they'll send it out to Massachusetts, MIT, MIT or something like that. And you don't get anything back for six weeks. And then you do get it back, you know, maybe the eighth week, by that time the growing season's over, but then you get 10 pages of something that says, what? Um, the soil test kit came on board and said, look, you can send it to us. We'll just send you the garden center, the return on that, as well as getting in touch with the customer so that you have record of this. So it's a play all the way around where it's covering and it's within, I don't know how long was it? So once they get the result, once they get the mm -hmm. test kit back in the mail, within 48 hours, you have your results on your computer page on, you know, off their site. And whatever nutrients you're lacking, the garden center will provide it. I don't know if you go through high yield or whoever, but I mean, you know, from mycorrhizae all the way to potassium to potash, phosphorus, or nitrogen, whatever they're lacking, you can go ahead and provide for them. The whole point of that show was how how they've taken something farmers have done forever by smell, basically. Well, they just pick it up and smell it and taste it. But yeah. they're making it consumer level and immediate with consumer uh, speak. And I mean, people were just amazed that, that they were doing that and how successful they have been. Once you've established that, there's a trust factor. Well, I found out from this and you sold me the, the soil test kit. I want to come back. I want to find out from these folks, regardless if they're going to pay anything right then and there. But if they do want something, they're going to continue to go back and purchase it from you. So one more thing. And if we have any other questions, feel free to yell. It was kind of interesting that we had um, during the Asian bugs that came in. It's called Asian Army. No, no. no. We got that all messed up. Asian Lady Beetle? <laughs> yes. Okay. That was cool. So, <laughs> He's the technocrat. <laughs> um, I posted on our Facebook page and in Instagram uh, a graphic showing the two different bugs. That was purely informational on our part, just throwing that out there. Uh, several other people had the same problem, stumbled upon our graphic, and then took it, and they distributed amongst all their followers on their Instagram page. So maybe as a, your group, when you're talking about your social media, just something as simple as helping everybody out, like that, it doesn't even have to be a podcast message. Um, just a, a bit of advice every twice a week or once a week for each of your groups to throw out there, um, and then everybody picks it up and it just it just grows and multiplies like that. And that everybody saw our name. Um, we had we had seven hundred and some downloads in. 40 days, and we did not re release a single episode during that time. We were dark for January and part of February. But Scott yet, decided to take a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> but yet, we just from social media stuff, we had message getting out there and downloads coming down. So, so we're out of time. Yeah. Does anyone have any final questions here or on the Zoom call for either Mike or Scott? Um, this is the time to unmute if you like to do that. We get a look in that when we're talking to Scott and or Jennifer or even Joe. You could learn your you, job. You could look anywhere you want. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> no questions? Oh, come on. Somebody's got there's got to be two more questions out there. Well, why they think of that, uh, you and I will um, communicate after the meeting tonight and uh, yeah, sure. probably next week and then figure out how to create a buzz and act some activity and some connections and we'll, we'll take it from there. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you everybody.